Hello, and welcome to the review of episode seven of Rings of Power. You better bet your ass I'm getting my use out of this helmet that I spent probably too much on. Coming off the high of episode six, which in my opinion was the best Rings of Power it had to offer so far, I am sad to say that episode seven for me was stumbling back into the show's biggest problems. Once again, this is going to be a spoiler review, so if you have not seen it, go check it on out and come on back, or don't. This is just some idiot sharing his opinion. But I thought episode six, especially on revisiting it, was really well executed overall. There's nitpicks to be had for the action and what they showed versus what they didn't, but in terms of the overall structure and package delivered for television, damn impressive. Episode 7, though, from a writing standpoint, just really felt messy to me, and like it didn't trust its viewer, and that bugged me quite a bit. Like, there are interesting things being set up and executed here. Like, honestly, everything between Durin, his father, Disa and Elrond was working for me to an extent. I felt the drama, I felt the tension, and coming off of House of the Dragon, I thought there was no way Rings of Power was gonna give me a family dynamic that still felt like it could live up to what I had just experienced, but it was getting there. With so much hinting towards like the delving too deep, and what we know is to come with the Balrog, but then we get this like moment where yeah, the Mithril is discovered and a leaf is put through the gap and it goes further than any leaf I've ever seen travel. And then we're like, shown the Belrog. And that's just personal preference. I get it. Some people probably don't really like that. Kind of drove me nuts. And this was like a consistent thing throughout the episode. And putting like a little bow on it, at the end of the episode, the final shot we get is this like slow pan out from the Southlands. And we see the Southlands just appear in like a Marvel style, like city skyline shot, burn away and become Mordor. And I was like, yeah, we got that. You didn't have to literally spell it out. I was watching it with Kayla and we both simultaneously in that moment just went, really? And right before they showed the Belrog, I forget if it was me or her, but one of us made the comment like, it'd be really dumb if they actually showed us the, oh, they did it. Unfortunately though, this isn't even necessarily my biggest criticism of the episode because tonally, oh, this was the worst Rings of Power it had yet in terms of just jumping from scenes with open wounds and gore, which honestly were more shocking though I thought Rings of Power was going to do. I didn't hate that, but going from that to like these sickly sweet moments right after just didn't really get me immersed in the story. It felt like I was going from scene to scene rather than that kind of natural smooth transition. You want a narrative to carry the viewer through. I have a hard time thinking of a beat within this episode that wasn't undercut by something. The Numenorean queen being blinded, very interesting. But then the Isildur being missing, we know he's not missing. His father just reacting the way he did wasn't meshing with me. Performance, surprisingly, and writing wise. And then of course, I've already said this before, so I won't hark on it too much, but everything with the Harfoots, I'm just, I'm not feeling. And now like the little slim shady wizards showing up. It's not about it. It's not gotten me interested. It's like overstayed its welcome. It needed to move faster for me to stay invested. And at this point, I'm just like too little, too late. And what popped into my mind at the very end of this is it feels like the best packaged tech demo I've ever gotten. Because again, obviously, I want to give mad respect to everyone who worked on this show behind the scene. Incredible. I mean, my surround sound is just popping off with a sensational score and the sound design, which is a bit rough in some moments, but overall fantastic. But when it comes to the actual contents of the package, the meat, the crux of why we're all here, I'm just not loving it. I'm only liking it at best, which is not to say it's horrible. Obviously, there's a lot of bad faith criticism about this show going on, and I don't mean to lean into that or buy into that. I still think the show is fine, but compared to what was promised, I'm pretty substantially underwhelmed. When you make so much of your marketing about how huge the budget of this show is and how revolutionary it's gonna be, the streaming service seller, and it's not as good as the boys? <laughs> not even close? I'm like, all right, you sure showed me you can technically do stuff very well but you still feel like a studio who is not able to put out a true masterpiece yet. And it's almost unfair for Rings of Power at this point because when issues like this start compounding throughout a season, you can start delivering in the latter half in some ways that if the foundation was better, could really resonate and work. There were a few of those like, please feel emotion now scenes that if they had been set up better, I actually think the execution of them for that shot, that beat really worked. But because I was already kind of sitting there like, 
okay, I, I get it, I get it, like, you don't need to say this all again. I wasn't actually entertained by it, which at the end of the day is the purpose of these shows. And yeah, I'm still really jealous that people are loving this show, and I get it. I actually had a conversation with my dad where he watched episode one of House of the Dragons, was like, not for me, do not like it bad. And he watched Rings of Power and he's like, I love episode six. It's great aside from some nitpick. I wonderful. I love seeing that. I love seeing that there are people who can enjoy and dislike things and all sides of things that would make this interesting. Disappointed to say that Rings of Power as we're getting to the end, it had episode six, which gives me hope episode eight could really be something interesting. But man, episode seven, it felt like, okay, we're going to recover from what was done. And the recover was them spelling out a lot of stuff, which I... Yeah, I knew. This runtime of this episode could have been like a third less. But that was just my review of this episode. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Like and subscribe if you have not already, and hit the Patreon if you want to support what I do here. Have a good one, y'all. Peace.